Mary Magdalene's gospel starts with missing pages. These are the words we can't get back, this is the wisdom, the voice of Christ from the heart of a woman, that was torn out and most likely destroyed before the rest of her gospel was buried. There was something so incendiary in these first six pages that her gospel starts on page 7. And there's something poetic about that, since according to Mary's gospel, seven is the number of stages we need to go through or powers we need to confront within ourselves to reach a clarity or singularity of heart that lets us see past the ego of our own little lives to what's more accurate, lasting, infinite, and already here within us. Three copies of the Gospel of Mary have been recovered, two in Greek and one in Coptic. All three versions of her Gospel are missing the beginning and four pages in the middle. And those four pages would have contained the answer to what I believe is one of the most significant questions we could ever know. Mary asks Christ, So, now, Lord, does a person who sees a vision see it with the soul or the spirit? All we have of his answer is this provocative yet cryptic start, the Savior answered, a person does not see with the soul or with the spirit. Rather, the mind, which exists between the two, sees the vision, and that is what. Mind, here, isn't the modern, dualistic concept of the mind that we think of today. It's not mind devoid of body. It's a word that's hard to translate from the Greek. It's best to keep it in Greek, although the first time I came across it, I thought it was in French. It's nous. Nous in French means we. Nous in Greek means the eye of the heart. It's the vision or perception of the soul. How we see anything changes everything. And there's so much at stake here, so her question to Christ is still ours to answer. And this is why perhaps the answer to her brilliant question was torn from her gospel in the first place because it would have revealed how we perceive the divine directly, from within. What's at stake is spiritual authority. And what I mean by that is the struggle to determine who has the power to tell Mary Magdalene's story and, subsequently, the authority to speak the truth about our own story. If how we see, truly see, is not with eyesight but with a vision, a form of spiritual perception that allows us to know what's real, what's lasting, what's true, if this comes from within us, then no one has power over us. Simple. Yes. And simply revolutionary. For me. These seven powers in Mary's Gospel serve as the template of what it means to be human. It's like being handed a road map for the inner terrain. Here are the seven routes the ego can take while you're embodied. Here are the places where we get stuck as human beings. These are the climates, the states of mind that can compel us to act in ways that do not indicate who we are. These are the powers that can silence us from within. I guess this story I'm about to tell you is what religious scholars would call a conversion story. The Gospel of Mary did convert me, and her Gospel helped me understand why I've never felt at home in a Christianity that excluded it. From a theological perspective, Mary Magdalene's Gospel is considered an ascent narrative, which describes a path we can navigate to liberate the soul, not in death, but here in this lifetime. The word ascent is misleading because the imagination immediately goes upward. Thinks transcendence. According to the Gospel of Mary, Ascension is more accurately a descent into the heart, so farther up is further in. For me, finding Mary Magdalene's voice meant recovering my own. This is why I've spent most of my life studying her gospel and following her legend through history. I hope in sharing her voice in this book, you will hear the voice of your soul. I also want to clarify that this will end the way it began. It's very T.S. Eliot and the Four Quartets, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. It's not about getting somewhere or reaching someplace else. Although I will tell you how I ended up perched like a baby goat in yoga gear on the side of a mountain in the south of France, searching for Mary Magdalene's cave of eggs. Mary's gospel does not suggest that we need to become someone else, someone, better. There isn't this OM vibrating version of yourself that you figure out how to be by the end of this book or that I've become by living it. It's about acquiring a vision that allows us to see what has always been here within us. It's about the quality and intensity of our existence. It's about the possibility of actually being present instead of being caught without even realizing it in the endless stories the ego tells from the second we wake up, dividing us from what's already right here, dividing us from each other and ourselves, dividing us from what we consider reasonable or God. It's about waking up to the fact that our system of understanding the world no longer serves us. Or so this is how my conversion story goes. I wake up to a way I've been operating in the world, the world created by my ego, 
and I see the suffering it perpetuates. I notice that there's another way. And that way does not include finding some hot, saucy pants lover who completes me or the discovery of a tried and true recipe for uninterrupted joy. Not fame. Not success. There's no end point here, no fixed state of completion. There's no master or guru status. It's just alpha, then omega, ad infinitum. This is what I'm trying to explain. No X marks the spot. It's simpler than that and far more complex. It's more of a series of perpetual moments when you remember that you don't have to feel separate from love, if you don't want to. Even in the midst of the worst of what we say to ourselves, even when someone we love most in the world can't see us at all, we can practice a way that humbles us, disrupts the ego's grasp, and lets us return, with ease, to love. It's all calm and unremarkable, though. It's not showy or exciting. It's more like this from Elizabeth Gilbert, never forget that once upon a time, in an unguarded moment, you recognized yourself as your friend. And in that moment of recognition, this is when we save ourselves from the self that was never real to begin with. This is when we see with the eye of the heart. Stay focused. This will continue.